Learn the Sword is a weekly show on TGN with a new episode every Friday. See the full show below. Hello, my name is Sheehan Abbott. And I'm Shelby Abbott. And welcome to your third lesson at Learn the Sword on TGN TV. Yep. Yeah. Did you notice anything different? because I added a few more subtleties to the equation. One subtlety is drawing the sword. Another subtlety is sheathing the sword. The last subtlety was that I just demonstrated your first kata in the Hapogiri series. Kata, the Japanese term for prearranged movements and patterns. If you are practicing with a steel sword and don't quite understand all the subtleties involved, if you can't recognize these subtleties, you might want to practice with wood just a bit longer. Because when you jump ahead and start practicing with steel, one slight mistake could be devastating. To avoid any of these dangerous problems while learning your basic footprint, let's make sure we stay with a wooden bulk toe and go through all the basics with that first. Later, with practice and time, you also will be able to wield a shinken. Shinken, a razor sharp samurai sword. Now that most of you have a wooden boken or bokuto, even though the broomsticks are still good and viable, but with a bokuto, you'll have much better feeling and an understanding on how to handle the sword a lot better. With that thought, Let's begin. Nogitsuke, drawing a Japanese sword from a chi. Let's bring drawing the sword into the equation. When we lift the sword up and then come into your triangle, I want your sword to go through your hands until the end and then keep your left hand at your left side above your left hip and then complete the draw. The draw can be vertical, the draw can be horizontal, the draw can be to your right, it can be to your left. It can be a Migi Mayoku Giri or a Shinchoku Giri. The draw can be any direction you choose. Although at this time, to create a stronger foundation, Let's follow these simple drawing scenarios. And since we're incorporating this with the first kata of the Hapogiri series, let's begin with our first draw, which is a Migi Mayoku Giri, learned in your last lesson. Stand in a V stance, chest out, bow, 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, and back up on four. Your left arm up, up to your hip, your right arm up to your hip, bring them both forward to create that triangle. Turn the sword counterclockwise until the blade is flat to the ground, then begin to draw the sword straight forward and outward. Notto, the act of sheathing the sword. Sheathing a steel sword requires much more concentration and practice. Using a wooden bokuto though really makes the equation a lot easier because safety isn't a factor. Here are the basic movements on sheathing a sword. Bring the sword back to the top of your hand. Lift the sword upward and bring it out until the tip falls into your left hand, which is positioned above your hip. Pull the sword backwards, allowing the sword 
to pass through your fingers on your left hand and bring it back to that triangle. Stand back. And the sword is sheathed. Here's a much closer look. As you can see, drawing and sheathing the sword is a very important factor. And to become proficient, let's practice this a bit. Right foot forward, left hand at your side, and draw and sheathe. Hand at your side and lift it up. Draw and sheathe. And again, draw and sheathe. Now that you're starting to understand the basic footprint of drawing and sheathing, let's go on to Chibudi. Chibudi, flinging or wiping the blood off the blade. Chibudi is not really a practical aspect of the sword, but it's ingrained more with the culture, ritual, and ceremony. To the Japanese samurai, Chibudi was very important. If there are hundreds of ways to draw the sword and thousands of ways to make a cut, Chibudi is also a process that can be done in many ways. Here is one basic Chibudi pattern we will practice to create a stronger foundation. We will take our left hand and bring it back at our side and with the right hand we're going to slowly turn it counterclockwise down to the side and then pull it around the base here just like this. If I was going to take the sword and maybe scribe something into a wall, I would scribe a C. But make it a large C like this. Before we put Shibuti into the equation on your first kata, let's practice it just a little bit more to become smooth. Now let's add Shibuti to the equation. It yeah. In your third lesson, we've gone over drawing the sword, sheathing the sword, flinging the blood off, and understanding your first kata. Your next lesson is going to offer a lot more. Until that next lesson, I'd like you to practice your basic kihon kata, kata one, over and over again until your rote memory has set in. That way, it will be much easier to go on to the next lesson plans that have a rhyme and reason. I am Shihan Abbott, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson at Learn the Sword on TGN TV. Until our next lesson, be well. Yeah!